Hey, good morning. How you doing? Happy Tuesday. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. Don't forget to share this video with everybody you know. If you're watching it on Facebook, share it with everybody you know. Just hit share and then tag all your friends and share it with everybody you know. And you can, uh, when you get the uh, text message today, cut and paste it. What we do, copy and paste it and send it to everybody you know. Because a lot of people are getting those now. Because I'm getting phone calls from people saying, Hey, somebody has been sending me your videos. And I just praise God for them. And, and these people are getting healed, some of them. And some of them are getting some miracles. So it's really neat what's going on. Also, when you help us share this message and send it around the world with your uh, donations and your offerings today, call me because I want to speak the blessing over you at the same time. The word for word blessing that God told us to speak. And he said, when you do that, I will bless them. Huh? Hey, glory to God. Hey, I want to talk to you today. As promised, I talked about it yesterday, what we're going to do. I want to talk to you today about how the power of God actually works. How this power actually works. <clears throat> in <clears throat> We see this in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says, Peter said, he says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. There is so much in that verse. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. What's actually in that verse? What is there is how God anointed Jesus. How many of you know Jesus gave up all of his powers when he left heaven? He emptied himself. When he came here, he came here as a man who was the son of God. He referred to himself as the son of God and the son of man. He referred to himself as the son of God. That's where the power came from. He referred to himself as the son of man. That's where the authority came from. Remember the demons would, would, would challenge him. They said, you know, we know who you are. Leave us alone. He didn't have to because he was born of a woman which gave him the authority to operate in the earth. That's a whole nother subject. But that's where his authority came from. He came in through the womb, just like you and me did. Amen? How God anointed, and when Jesus came up out of the river after he was baptized, the Holy Ghost came down on him. That was the anointing. That was the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. One. That's step one. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost. Step two. And with power. He was anointed with with power. Now, the power of God, the anointed power of God is a whole different deal, separate from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I know it says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That is the power to do what God has called you to do. But there's a whole separate deal, folks. And that is the anointed power. It's what we call the miracle working power. Now, a lot of people say that's on everybody. It may be, but it takes faith to use it. Jesus had the faith to use it. He was anointed with power. Anybody can operate in God's power if they have faith in the name of Jesus. So the Holy Ghost brings power. But this anointed 
power of God is like electricity. It's like electricity. Can I prove it to you? Can I prove it? Can I prove it to you that it's like electricity? It's a current. A current. And sometimes, if you're around somebody who has that, you can actually feel it. I have had people, sometimes, some people in my meeting, one time some people tried to walk up to me in my meeting, they couldn't get within five feet of me, they just fell over. They were feeling an electricity, a, a power that was on me. I didn't even feel it. They did. Amen? Now, it hasn't happened all the time, but it happened that time. Why it happened that time? Ask the Lord. Ask God. Look at this. Mark chapter 5. There was a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years, and she could not get healed. She could not get healed. For 12 years, she could not get healed. But when she heard about Jesus, when she heard about Jesus, she came in the crowd and she touched his garment. Because she said, if I get a hold of his clothes, I can be made whole. Look what happened. Look what happened here. She touched the garment of Jesus. She touched his garment. And Jesus immediately knew something had happened. Now, she is, apparently she's behind him. He said, who touched me? Do you know why he said, who touched me? He could feel the power flow out of him. There's been times when I touch people, I could feel a transfer of power. A lot of times I don't. Doesn't matter if I can feel it or not. I don't go by feelings because I've had people healed off their deathbeds and I didn't feel nothing. They still get healed. They still get healed. But Jesus, being so sensitive to the Holy Spirit and to the power, he felt it go out of him when she grabbed a hold of his clothes, his garment. He said, who touched me? And the disciples said, how can you say that? There's people all around you. How can you say about one person who touched me? There's, there's no way to know who touched you. He said, who touched me? He turned around. And the woman confessed that it was her. He said, go in peace. Be, be free of your plague. Your faith has made you whole. What was her faith in? Was her faith in healing? No. If it was, she wouldn't have needed Jesus. Amen? Anybody can get healed on their own if they have enough faith. No. Her faith was in touching the garment. And that's the faith Jesus was talking about. Her faith was in his power. She grabbed it. And she got it. Amen? Be it unto you according to your faith, Jesus said. She got it according to her faith. This power, this power flowed out of Jesus, he felt it. When I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost three weeks later, I was reading in uh, Mark 16, verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. I said, I'm one of them that believes. I should be able to do this. I should be able to lay hands on the sick and have them recover if I am one of them, which I am. Guy came out of the service department. He says, oh, 
He says, I won't be at work tomorrow. He says, I blew out my knee. He says, I can't even walk on it. He's limping around. And I walked over to him. Now, when I read that, Mark chapter 16, verse 17, these signs shall follow them that believe. I'm telling you, something changed in my life. Something happened to me there that day, sitting in the corner, at the corner desk, where I could see out the window at the used car lot, something happened to me. Something came over me. I didn't even know what it was. I had no understanding of the things of God. But I had an understanding that these signs shall follow them that believe. And I said, I am one of them that believe. So I should be able to lay hands on a sick person and have them recovered. Does that make any sense to anybody? If it says I can do it, I should be able to do it because I'm one of them. That's all I knew. I knew. I had never seen a, a sick person prayed for. I had never seen a sick person healed. I had never seen this before. <clears throat> I had never even seen it on TV. I'd heard about it. People laughed about it and mocked it and everything, you know, but I didn't know anything about it. So I walked over to this guy with the blown out knee. I said, do you believe God can heal you? Now keep in mind, he knew absolutely nothing and I knew next to nothing. I said, do you believe God can heal you? He looks up at me and goes, yeah. I put my hand on his shoulder. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command that knee to be healed. I took my hand off him and stepped back. I said, you're all set. He went back to the service department. Half an hour later, I went back. I said, how you doing? He said, you're not going to believe this, but the swelling is going down. I said, okay. Half an hour later, he comes out. Five o'clock, time to quit. He said, I'll be at work tomorrow. He says, look at my knee. He says, it's cured. I have been seeing miracles ever since. He walked out the door, and I went, oh. God just did a miracle through me. I'd been saved three weeks. But when I touched him, that power that had come upon me went into him and healed him. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, the same power that was transferred into the woman with the issue of blood. That same power went into that man and healed his knee. I have had that happen thousands of times since. Everybody I touch gets healed. They'll stay healed if they keep their mouth shut. Amen? People healed over the phones. A week ago, a young boy with autism healed come back to life. People healed off their deathbeds. Brain tumors disappeared. All kinds of things. Because this healing power that came on me that day, sitting at my desk, when I read that verse, it just came down on me. I didn't even know what it was. But I know what it is now. Because I've been around it. I know I know what it is. I have, God has given me an understanding of it. And I'm telling you what, that healing power, and, it, it, and it's transferred a lot of ways. Tomorrow we'll talk about how it's transferred. You need healing today? And it works for finances too. That same power works for finances. Hey, I'm about out of time. Help us send this message around the world. Don't forget to share this video and when you do your offerings and your donations today, call me because I want to speak the blessing over you at the same time. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to talk about how the healing power is transferred into people.